Hey everybody, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. I wanted to hop on and do a quick live video because I've had a few people ask me a question this week and I was like, okay, it's time because clearly this is something a lot of people need to know about. How do you budget on an irregular income? How do you make a plan for your money when your income goes up and down on a monthly basis? So I've got two hot tips for you and then a couple of options to consider. And then make sure you stay tuned to the end. I'm gonna tell you how to get a free download that will help you with all of your budgeting needs, okay? So first tip is if you have an irregular income, you might need to change name every single bit down at the beginning of the month and say, okay, this is the month of November. Here's our November budget. That is not what we do at my house because I have an irregular income as a social seller and financial coach. And so we do our budget the 15th of one month through the 14th of the following month. That cycle makes the most sense for us because my biggest paycheck from my social selling company comes on the 15th of the month. And so I make a plan where we do a zero-based budget that's where there's a plan for every single dollar of income that we have. And so we do our budget the 15th of November through the 14th of December, and that's our budget cycle. So the first tip is to adjust your budget cycle based on when your main paycheck is, when you know exactly what it's going to be, and that way you can create a zero-based budget that is based on the actual dollar amount that's hitting your bank account for that month. My second tip is to have open communication and reflection with yourself, with your spouse, your partner, if you're in a relationship where you're sharing a bed and sharing money, okay? And be sure that you guys are on the same page about the budget because when your income fluctuates, sometimes there's different expectations. And if you're not communicating clearly about what your income was for this month, what your budget is for this month, one partner might still be spending like you're making $8,000 where maybe you only made $4,000 the previous month or same for smaller amounts, right? Maybe you typically bring in $2,000 a month with your social selling business, but you only brought in $1,000 that month. And so you want to adjust your spending habits, adjust your budget based on where your business is at that moment in time. And also not to have shame over that. Incomes go up and down when you're an entrepreneur, whether it's through a social selling company or you have a home-based business or a business of some other kind, a traditional brick and mortar. So have open communication in addition to changing when your budget cycle is in a way that makes sense for when your paychecks come. And those are my two main tips. Now there's two options I just want to throw out there. At different seasons of our life and of my social selling business, we have done two different things with our social selling income as far as our weekly checks. So with a social selling business and with other types of traditional irregular income, you might be paid different times of the month. At most social sellers, we have a monthly paycheck, which is typically our biggest one of the month. And then we also have a weekly paycheck. And so if you are, um, if you don't have a plan for your weekly paychecks, then that money just kind of comes into your bank account and you might spend it on something that you wouldn't have if you had set aside time to make a plan for that income. So the key here is absolutely being intentional and having a plan before that money hits your bank account. So option one, this is something we've done in the past. We don't include those weekly paychecks as part of our regular monthly budget. We just use it for the specific financial goal that our family has at the moment. So as an example, if we wanted to get our emergency savings fund up to $10,000, then every single weekly paycheck that I would get, I would put immediately into our savings account. I'm not even gonna touch it. I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm just gonna watch the um, balance of that savings account go up over time because that's our intention. Our intention is to build our savings account. If your intention is to pay off your credit card debt, then every single Friday when that weekly check hits your bank account, you're gonna take it and make a 
payment on your credit card immediately. Like, don't let that money sit because if you do, you'll be like, oh, well, let's go out to dinner or, oh, let's do this. And it's not that you can't do those things. It's the intention behind it. It's the predetermination of this is what this business is for. This is what this money is for. We are going to hit our financial goals. So one option is not including those weekly checks as part of your regular budget and just when you get them, applying them immediately to whatever financial goal your family has at the time. The second option, we have done this too in different seasons, is you just pretend like that money isn't there yet and you apply it to next month's budget. So as an example, if my weekly checks for this month, let's say they totaled $800, then there will be an extra $800 that's accumulating over the month in my bank account, and that's fine. I'm not gonna touch it, I'm not gonna spend it. I have the discipline to do that. But then when I sit down to do my budget on December 14th for the next month cycle, I'm gonna say, okay, so we had the $800 in weekly paychecks, so that just counts as part of our income for the next month's budget. And we're able to have a plan for spending that money that reflects our financial goals and what we want to do with our money as a family. So that is option two. You can kind of just set it aside and add it, add the value to next month's budget so that you're able to make a plan for spending that money. But the key is whatever you decide to do, don't let having an irregular income keep you from creating a budget. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't get paid the same every single month, so I can't do a budget. False. <laughs> False, you can, and I would even argue that it's more important that you make a plan for your money if your income is fluctuating up and down. So I hope that this was helpful. What I want you to do is run to the link in my profile. Just yesterday, I uploaded a freebie for you guys. It is called Seven Steps to Creating a Realistic Budget. Realistic is the key here because sometimes we create a budget and it's not something we can stick to. It's not something we can manage. So I want to encourage you that whether you have tried budgeting before and you're like, ugh, we failed. It doesn't work for me. We couldn't stick to it. Or whether you've known for a while that you probably need a plan for your money, but budgeting feels gross and you don't want to do it, or it feels overwhelming or scary or hard, or you're facing all these financial fears, just know that that freebie is going to help you do it it's gonna give you seven simple steps to follow that is so easy a caveman can do it, okay? And also there is a four page printable part at the end of that that is a template that you can use. Hey Katie, it's a template that you can use to actually write out your budget. Use a pencil because pencil and Pencils are erasable and that's just what's best when you are figuring out a plan for your money because it's gonna change. I get into that in that free download, but make sure you head to my Linktree link in my profile, grab that freebie, download it, print it off, and create your November budget, or if you have an irregular income, follow my suggestion and maybe wait until right before your next paycheck, your next big paycheck and do it that way. But I hope that this was helpful. I would love to hear from you. If you have additional questions, let me know. I would love to answer them in a live video or in another resource, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.